Ooh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for our second of two best of threes today. We've got Team Digno Toss up against Team Dog. Our second winner's bracket round two matchup. It's been a little bit of an extended break. It was uh, about 30 minutes delayed, but what's important is we're in the game, Merlini. Yeah, we had some players with connection issues, but yep. now we're started. Draft already well underway. Let's hop right into it. So it looks like drafting for Team Dog will be Pie Cat, and for Dignitas will be Derp Derp. Mm -hmm. And just uh, in, in good form here in the last cast, we'll clear the air. We did uh, have a bit of a boo-boo. That was Smuggling, not Mason, that was standing in uh, in the winner's bracket round one that we were casting a couple days ago. Today they have a new stand-in, Stone, a name that I actually don't recognize. Yeah, I like having to have stand-in tags for stand-ins. That makes sense. I like that. Yeah, it's a nice touch. It makes it does make a lot of sense. It's um, I I agree. So uh, Digno Toss did have the luxury first pick here. They went with the Nature's Prophet, Bat Rider, and Chantress. First two picks from Team Dog. Uh, Bat Rider with the first pick is something we haven't seen. We have not too much in this patch. He's He's pretty good if you can play him well, but you yeah. have to be able to play him really well. He's uh, not an easy hero. Yeah, well, that's that's for darn sure. And, and uh, you have to get lucky with uh, non-golem spawns, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that was going to be my next question. Where does he lane? Is he slated to be solo mid? Is he that uh, kind of off lane slash jungler? Where's, where does he thrive right now? It depends now? on the matchup. Like, he can probably kill a Nature's Prophet. Mm -hmm. If it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup in... It's all about that magic stick. Bat Rider safe lane. It's all about the magic stick, but he's still going to die. He's still going to die. <laughs> um, what else? We have an Enchantress, which will be who will be jungling, more likely than not. Mm -hmm. So it looks like they're going for a very aggressive strategy again. How um, is Bat Rider mid right now? I mean, is that even viable? Yeah, is, it's viable. It's viable. It's, it's all right. It's not amazing, but it's you can definitely get killed. Uh, and if you get a rune, it's almost a guaranteed kill in the side lane, too. Okay. Interesting. Now, the Enigma second pick from Dignitas. We've seen a little bit of Enigma here and there, and uh, he can certainly still be a good pick. Falling off a little bit in popularity, but second pick, that's... Um, you want to ban Rubik. If You want to make sure that the opposing team doesn't have Rubik. That's the first and foremost thing when you pick Enigma, so they will immediately ban it out. Seconds. This is somewhat of a similar strategy that we saw them run last time. I think it was Nature's Prophet plus Enigma plus the Invoker, Nine I want to say. Pick. For Dignitas, so looks like they're going for a very similar thing. Uh, we see the Invoker first banned by Team Dog, and it looks like they will just replace it with a Dragonite. So very similar thing to very similar, just a lot of push potential, a lot of minions, and yep. they need AOE. Yeah, Dragonite does synergize well with the pushing pushing strat that they shall employ here, no doubt. Ten seconds remaining. Um, <laughs> We'll see where they go from here. Five Luna third pick uh, for Team Dog. And Might be more of a deny pick than an actual useful for them pick. Them. Yeah, that's a good point. Luna would have worked really well with this huge pushing AOE team fight. Could uh, still be a Drow Ranger, base though. roster. Yeah. I, I guess Drow could be okay. For Dignitas, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, although, where are they going to put her? Dragon Knight presumably will be in the Radiant mid lane. Safe lane. Pick. So safe just, lane a, just a safe lane Drow, just farming away. All right. I got gotcha. you. And uh, Elder Titan, the fourth pick for Team Dog here. They're uh, bringing Sexy back. Bring <laughs> <laughs> Justin Timberlake, a.k.a. Elder Titan. But there you go. Talk Dial about hitting the nail back. on the head. Drow Ranger. Or Drow, depending on how hipster you want to be here. She's going to be their fourth pick. We saw uh, a little bit of Drow action earlier on in this tournament, though. It's been Big not, fail both yeah, times. Yeah, not really too much of this. This one, I think it works a lot better. Mm -hmm. Firstly, Team Dog doesn't have that much anti-push. Secondly, they don't have a super aggressive offlaner in Elder Titan. Most likely, he's probably going to be offlane. Mm -hmm. He could be solo mid too, but they could potentially take um, advantage of that and just play super greedily. They have like a super greedy lineup. Nature's Prophet, Enigma, Draw Ranger, all of these can farm in like the first 10 minutes without... You know, without really giving up that much, you don't really worry about the opponents outgreeding you with these three. Yeah. And Dragonite's a very tanky solo mid too, so you're not really worried about your Dragonite dying too. So mm -hmm. Dignitas's strat is very—it's more single focused. It has a lot of strength in that push and greed factors. Uh, for Team Dog, they have just a medley of a lineup. Nothing really like synergizes amazingly well. Mm -hmm. 
Radiant yeah, team I mean, they've got Earth Splitter, they've got Eclipse, two big ultimates that are pretty team flag based. They've got some gank potential with the Enchantress, decent initiation with the Bat Rider, but yeah, I don't, I don't see that team cohesion here. Yeah, it's just like a motley of heroes. Luna, I mean, Luna Shadow Shaman here is the first synergy that we've seen of like very strong push. But like Enchantress and Elder Titan, the synergy is not really there. She has pure damage, so it doesn't get amplified by natural order. She is also very aggressive, whereas Elder Titan is more passive and reactionary. Um, unless you put him in the solo mid roll, and then like Bat Rider is useful too, but they don't have that really that many uh, gankers. Enchantress is like a more of a one through five ganker. Bat Rider is more pet post six ganker. So it's just slightly unusual if if uh, team dog win this it will certainly be because of out skill and out play rather than out draft five mm -hmm. seconds remaining yeah so shadow shaman their final choice we'll see what dignitas uh want to grab we'll probably call time. them uh, team zerg as well so they're not confused yeah with, let's call them zerg uh, dignitas so they, they need what a support that can duel as a pusher and they probably need some way to set up fights because right now they don't really have a good way to set up fights yeah maybe dragon i can just like run in and do stuff but when you have a bat rider you always have to be very wary so i think mm, i'm trying to think what would be good for them i would like a i would like a tide tide would be awesome now that would be interesting but i don't think though no one likes tide hunter no one likes tide hunter. I li besides me i like tide hunter a lot he, he like destroys a lot of these heroes you know i haven't even seen a tide hunter and a, a a pub game, a str I haven't even heard of the name Tidehunter uh, in months. I, I like I draft him in Captain's Draft and Captain's Mode. Oh yeah, you're like guys, we're picking Tidehunter. He's good. He dude. owns the reason why he got the reason why he got kind of fell off the map. Same reason as Beastmaster, just because other heroes got really strong. Life Stealer destroys Tide. Um, who else destroys Tide? Magnus was just a much better Tidehunter too. Mm. So now that both of those heroes have kind of fallen by the wayside, I think Tidehunter should make a resurgence back into the competitive play and then like heard with, it here first. with alchemist kind of like getting crapped on uh yeah. to like beastmaster starting to make his way back too yeah so they will go with the disruptor all right. we saw some successful disruptor right. play earlier so I, I can't be too upset i i think like i said earlier a hero that i'm quickly becoming a fan of i, I can't help but think i was yeah but it doesn't it doesn't like really work that well against the opponent strategy though like they don't have that aggressive in a lineup i think disruptor fares better against aggressive lineups or it's yeah. Fares better in aggressive lineups. Right? Although I, well, no, Disruptor actually isn't that great against Bat Rider because what? So if Bat Rider comes in, he lassos somebody, and you glimpse him. Mm -hmm. If he glimpses his back while he has a lasso on, it pulls the lasso target to no. that position. It it depends on what the there's some requirements for the lasso breakage. Firstly, you have to, it's it's like you have to move more than X amount of units in less than X amount of time. So uh, if it's like a blink dagger or a TP, those are like instant moves as opposed to a force staff which slides you. Mm -hmm. So if you read the tooltip, it'll say, oh. if Bat Rider moves more than 400 units in 0 0.05 seconds, the lasso breaks. So if he gets glimpsed more than 400 units away, then it will break. If not, then it won't break. I just got owned by the tooltip once again. That's uh, Well, that's not – it's a very uncommon thing for people to yeah. uh, know. But – it's more like for Ventral Spirit, I think, 600 range swap. It might be a little bit more since they buffed it, but it's somewhat of the same thing. But the problem is Glimpse is an instant. Like, it's instant cast, but for it to take effect, it takes some time. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not like not, not the best initiate. It's not the worst initiate, though. I myself would prefer to Venge. Venge is good. Yeah. Because it, it gives them a lot of damage. It gives them some more ganking potential. And it also is um, they have the aura for the more pushing. Mm -hmm. So, I, I would like to venture over Disruptor. Disruptor is good, but he's good for certain heroes. He's very good for Slark, Weaver, those sort of right. uh, heroes. But when they're going to get the jump on you, most likely, it's yeah, not quite as, not good. as good. It almost seems like Disruptor will be good against the team that he's on. You know, the Nature's Prophet coming in. The yeah. one we saw earlier where he ports in, you just send him right back to where he came from. It's irritating to deal with. It is very irritating to deal with. But, I mean, it is really good at punishing overextensions and slight out of positioning, but I don't know. It, maybe Team Dog will do that. Maybe D Demon will do that. Maybe. It's possible. He uh, he likes to make I the think it's plays. a safe bet. <laughs> Who's going to be playing the Bat Rider? Who's your best guess? I would say Demon. De a Demon Bat Rider? Now that is going to be exciting. I think he likes playing the flashy heroes. Mm -hmm. So he That's likes true. playing like Puck, like we saw. Yeah. Like Bat Rider. Like Elder Titan, that is not really his thing. Mm -hmm. um, he also likes playing like Shadow Fiend. And yeah, okay. Sometimes he... He he likes playing high impact heroes is with he a high skill player? caps. Is he a co-op guy? Yeah, he plays co-op, but no one picks co-op. No I like co-op too, but yeah. she's uh, falling by the wayside. I, I like co-op, but I don't know. Every time I see her, I just can't help but think of uh, the Heroes of New Earth version that was like 
quap except on steroids the ultimate that applies the uh the dagger every time it's it absurd somebody. it's absurd it's insane so every time i play uh i play uh it's uh, like a 600 damage ultimate yeah every time i play quap i just think like man this ultimate is weak sauce it's not even close to what it her ultimate's so good now yeah. though. and it's still good i know it's it's ridiculous she but. can do insane bursts though she's probably well, one of the highest magic damage well, why did she fall off i mean was she what was she nerfed i don't remember reading too many changes and she she got nine. slightly nerfed yeah. Um, with the dagger costing 110 at all levels, it used to cost 80, 100, 120, 140. Now it costs 110, so that er er uh, nerfs her early laning phase. Yeah. She also... That's not um, that big of a nerf, though. It, uh, her laning phase is where she really comes in play, because she was often picked as a, a pretty hard counter in lane to Magnus, and Magnus would just get uh, crapped on. Okay. Um, but now people will like Puck more, because he has more utility with Silence and Coil. He Quap doesn't have any silence or stuns. It's just straight damage. And Puck's a lot harder to lock down. And Puck's much is. much easier to like. A lot of the times they just like leave the solo mid alone. Right, and right. oftentimes it's just better. Yeah. Ganking a good that. Puck is hard. Ganking a good Puck is hard. Ganking a good Quap is not as difficult. But yeah. she has so much more burst though. Like if you blink in old and mm -hmm. scream, that's like uh, six sixty magic AOE damage, which is and it's a massive area too. Mm -hmm. Puck's waning rift. You have to kind of have to have a blink, and Quap already has one built in, right? So. That's true. That's very true. Quap can also transition into physical damage, mm -hmm. whereas Puck cannot. The other mid hero that I think of, the, those three heroes on a similar level, Storm Spirit. I don't know why in my head I have those three. Kind Storm's of in a group. Storm's different, I'd say, because he's not AOE based. He's like single target gank, yeah. and the other ones are far more utility. But Storm also scales much better with items. So mm -hmm. it depends on what you want to do with the hero. Do you want to farm up and then gank? Do you want to gank and then get map control? Do you need utility? Do you need late game? Do you need magic burst? Do you need silence? Like versus Weaver, I think. If you think you can get an early Orchid, then Storm's better. If you don't think you're going to be able, able to get an early Orchid, then you go with Puck. If right, you right. Um, just want damage like versus like a DK or something like that, then you can go for a Queen of Pain who's more sturdy than a Puck because Puck relies on phase shift a little bit too yeah. much. So it depends. Yeah, well, there you go. There's some good uh, mid-hero theory crafting. Uh, there seemed to be still some connection issue, guys. I, I was half reading, uh, half listening there, as it seems like uh, someone is getting some very significant packet loss here. And um, looks like well, we're stuck in the lobby. Who was it that? Uh, Pycat. Pycat. Yeah, there you go. He is a European. Yeah. In Very the true. American qualifier, so it is understandable that he may have some connection issues. I was having yeah. really bad packet loss yesterday when I was playing Dota. Really? It was on awful. On U.S. West servers? On U.S. servers. I don't know whether it was U.S. West or East, but everyone wow. on in the game was. And oh, wow. it was for multiple games. And I was with Fog, and he was also having like massive packet delays. So uh, it might just be... Some um, server issues. might be server issues. Related to the actual players. But PyCat is now back in the game, so we should get underway very shortly. So looking at the draft, who do you favor... If you had to exclude player skill, and why? I'm gonna be honest. It's I, I'm having trouble remembering the two drafts. So the top of my head. Dignitas <laughs> went with the Enigma, Nature's Prophet, Drow oh, Ranger, right, right, Dragon right. Knight, <laughs> Disruptor. I mean, if we're gonna look at past data so far in this tournament, the Drow Ranger is a big gamble, and I don't know. I I don't know. I like we've yet to really see like a Drow Ranger snowball out of control in right. a competitive game in this tournament, like in this current uh, this, this current landscape. So I, I feel like I don't even really know what she can do if she does well because so far we've just seen her get <laughs> crapped on. So that like just at face value makes me think that the team with Drow is at an inherent disadvantage because she's just not that powerful. It's pretty reasonable. But at the same time, if we're just like in a vacuum, if like even skill level, if Drow can do okay, I, I mean I like the uh, the Enigma team, but I don't know. I, I always I get wary about Enigma picks as well um, because right now you, you can't. Th there's no adjustment. It gives you that jungler. Enigma is a great jungler, fast jungler. But if your lanes are having trouble, there's yeah, he can kind of come gank. But it's not like an enchantress who's going to come just like you know massively kill your lane. So, I, I would I would actually fan. say he's like stronger in a single lane gank. It depends. Like in a three on one situation with Enigma being the three, I think he's much stronger mm -hmm. because you have idolons. But at the same time, he can't control multiple lanes. Like right. an Enchantress can. Enchantress can send a Wild can send a Seder on bottom, and still jungle at the same time. So mm -hmm. she's like doing three things at once. Enigma is just more single with her. You either gank or you either, you farm. You can't do both at the same time. Right. Or, like right. at once, I guess. Yeah, so, that makes sense. Uh, but Enchantress is also, they, they can both push fairly well. So don't yeah. forget about that. That's true. It's true. It's not that Enigma is bad. It's just you have to spread out. And at this level of play, teams tend not to give you an opening to have an epic black hole. Right. And that's part of the problem with Enigma these days. A great hero, but 
his counter is just heads up positioning. And at, when you're looking at the upper echelon of players, that's it's not too hard to achieve. You know, they they know better than to hand over a good black hole opportunity. That's true. So I, I don't know. I think uh, Dignitas has a, a diffi more difficult to execute team. Again, they're the pushing team. That's the onus is on them to make the plays happen. Uh, and the uh, dire side can sit back and let their Luna get fat and try and take it to late game. Mm, I would no, beg to differ. Think so? I think that like right. I think Dignitas has a better better lineup for late game if, if they play passively. So I think that okay. I think that uh, really team dog. So? They have Dragonite Drow and they have a Black Hole to win the BKB wars. Okay. Too. Yeah. So like if it's BKB on BKB, yeah, they would probably win in a straight BKB war. But like okay. they have Black Hole to deal with, and that's that's a pretty potent thing. They'd have nothing to stop it through, um, through BKB except for Bat Rider Ultimate. But he can't get close usually because he'll just get sucked into the hole or yeah. a. Earth Splitter from the Elder Titan. I guess but. I also have faith in the Bat Rider initiation because uh, oh, it's all about the Bat yeah, Rider. Yeah, DNT don't have that same like they don't have a Clockwork, they don't have a Bat, they don't have like that insane initiator. Um, but that doesn't mean that they can't Prepare find initiation. Uh, I don't know. This is sort of a, a weird draft where I think it's it's kind of I, I don't think one side clearly outdrafted the other. Right. It is. It's a weird draft though. Yeah. For sure. It's like both of the teams like did their own thing. They're not even picking the like counter pick. Maybe the Luna pick to deny them a pick. But Dro replaces her somewhat easily. Although I think Luna is a much better hero than Drow Ranger. Anyways, yeah. we'll see. We'll see Demon as a solo mid Elder Titan. I don't really think that's his hero. I, I think he excels at other heroes, but that doesn't mean that he's bad with that one. Mm -hmm. And then on the running out the rest of Team Dog, we have PyCat on the support Rasta, also known as Shadow Shaman. We have Dogged on the Enchantress, also known as Fogged. We have MYM Dog, also known as Misery, on the Safe Lane Farming Luna. So it looks like Misery will be playing the carry role. This is the second mm -hmm. game in a row he's played it. Last time he played Spectre. And then we have the stand-in on the offlane Bat Rider. Sown. Yeah, the the uh, the Enigma player. We don't know who he is. Not literally. This is very smart. This is what I already like this from Sone. If you glance over here, like right below the radiant, uh, right before the dire T1, uh -oh. he cut down all the trees. Big time packet loss, Merlini. Yeah, that's very unfortunate. This is this is bad news, Bears. Already 45 minutes delayed. It looks like we'll have yet another remake. Oh boy. Oh boy, indeed. Volvo, please. This is... I actually have no idea what's going on, but, I mean, <laughs> both both Twitch and and uh, Valve were just not cooperating with me yesterday. Like, oh, no one Twitch could... Twitch issues, too? No oh, the one, chat. For, yeah. Firstly, I couldn't broadcast. Like, I tried to stream, and then no, people were like, oh. where's your stream? And I was like, well, it says it's live. And then, apparently, a lot of other people were having broadcasting issues, too. So, uh. Uh, Twitch TV support actually tweeted that they were aware of these broadcasting issues. Oh, well, and then... But that was, like... I mean, it was it was going on for a few hours. Yeah. And on top of that, there was no one that could talk in chat for multiple extended periods of time. Yeah, I had that same issue with chat, and that shit drives me bonkers. I will tell you, especially. I mean, you you have like that core viewership where the chat can break down at times. Everyone's spamming. When you're like in the double digits, chat is the only reason I'm streaming. You know, mm -hmm. like to interact with people and talk. When there's no chat, it's just like it seems like that's the easiest thing. I mean, people were chatting in like AOL chat rooms in like 1995, and they yeah. can't get this chat thing to work. It's 20 I play years later. Twitch plays Pokemon. Spamming the chat room, sucking up all that bandwidth. I don't know if that's true, but how much bandwidth does it take to <laughs> display some text? We're talking about like people streaming in 1080p versus some text. I like, mean, is it that hard? I, I'm not. I don't work in that sort of infrastructure, I, but I, at I, the I, same I, time, like, you're right. You're right. I'm I not, mean, even if streams aren't working, I feel like chat rooms are. That's that's actually a really good point. How much bandwidth does the chat room take up compared to just a singleton 1080p stream? Right. It's apples and oranges. That is weird. Yeah. But I mean, at the same time, it's like one source for the. Um, for the video stream as opposed to like everyone chatting but at the same time it's i mean it's a chat like, it's a chat yeah come on that that really bothers me though it's it, uh, it doesn't irk me that it's like that it's not there it irks me that it's like because uh, i don't interact with chat that often as yeah. often as other people but it's at the, the same time like they here. should be able like at the base minimum they should be able to have a chat that's yeah. functional yeah no, I, I totally agree. But I server know. issues too. Server issues are annoying, but I, I, that Maybe sounds like... Maybe it's just our American infrastructure here on the West Coast. It, it could be. Could be. I don't know. I, I don't heard, know uh, Team Viewer makes you... Why can't everything just to... work perfectly all the time? Well, I, I mean... Gosh a, darn it. That's a fair... Well, gosh darn, that's a good question, Merlini. I don't know. Maybe when you become president and uh, chief of the police... This will be yeah, my number one priority. Having stable Dota servers <laughs> and having stable <laughs> Twitch chat. 
So this, I'm going to run on that agenda. It's a big platform. Uh, I think you could do it. Well, no complaints about packet loss so far, so maybe we're good. The re 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 try. All right. Shout outs here. Look at, look at fogged. <laughs> so introducing Team Zerg. We have Blue Derp Derp, the captain, on the support Disruptor. We have Nayrock on the Enigma. I believe he played it last game as well. We have Dota that D2. Hashtag struggle continue versus Demon in middle. He will be playing the Dragon Knight. Seconds. We have Chicken MC back to the streets on the Nature's <laughs> Prophet. Pipped out with a genuine sight of vice. Or it could be auspicious. Let's see. Oh, it is auspicious. He is not. Cheater. Yeah, he is from the streets. Not <laughs> And then last but not least, we have D1 period space hashtag capital D on the Drow Ranger. What kind of a hashtag is that? I have no idea. Hashtag D. D block. He All likes right. D. He likes D. The D as in the Drow Ranger. Yeah. So last game we did introduce our dire roster, but well, what the hell, let's go ahead and do it again. Stand in zone, going to be on the Bat Rider headed down bottom. It will be solo mid Elder Titan played by Doggy Style, also known as Demon, a.k.a. Jimmy Ho. And up top, it'll be Fogged, a.k.a. Dogged, playing on the Jungling Enchantress. And up top, Misery will be on the Luna. And Piecat, well, he's going to be on the Support Shadow Shaman. So look at this from the from the Batrider. He already cut down these trees. This is something that you do with offlane Wind Ranger, with offlane Batrider, and with offlane Beastmaster. You cut down these trees so that you have full vision over here in case people gank you. and Or if the supports are actually pulling instead of zoning you out. And this will force the uh, supports to play less greedily. Yeah, a smart choice. And you can see the vision that it gives, at least during daytime, really it's opens huge. up that area. Yeah. Here has a ward there, too, so it's kind of overkill. But at the same time, it's still it's still useful. Mm -hmm. You might as well be doing it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's true. No reason not to. Oh, look at this double-double stack from Fog Dota. Whoa. The plays. The Watch plays out. The plays, indeed. And no mud golems. Ooh, Bat Rider. He'll be able to rotate in at some oh, point. Oh, he's, he's going to come in with the smoke. This is going to be maybe our level one first, but going back behind Chicken MC, back to the streets, or Dota that D2. I don't know who's it going to be. Looks like he's headed mid. He's got a Centaur as well I as a Dark Troll I Summoner. I think if, if they kill top, they can take the tower. Yeah. But I don't know. Dota that D2 is pretty pretty out there. Yeah, this guy, wow. He is so far forward. There's the Ensnare to start it off. An easy War Stomp. That's an oh, easy whoa. first blood for he's Team so Dog. And Enchantress will grab the bonus gold. Oh, the chuckle. That's so cute. Oh, it's well a nice done. smoke ink, too, and very good timing. But he also got somewhat good luck with the spawn, too. Man, if he, yeah. Imagine if he got double mud golems. He'd have to go with a satyr and a troll, which is not as useful as a centaur and a satyr. Yeah. Or centaur and a troll. Yeah, centaur and troll. That, that's like, that's that's like heaven GG right there. Combo. Yeah, that's perfect. And he's got another centaur to work with here. He's really been pretty lucky with these spawns. Did actually get one set of mud golems. Oh, and another spawn. Fogged. What a player. He's wow. pinging, too. Because he knows that he's a so player. He's like, Merlini, look at this. Look at me. I know. Put me in, coach. I got this. Chicken MC, he oh, is looking. He's level three, though. He, that's pretty pretty surprising. Oh, yeah, but, but Pie Cat will block He might him. die. Oh, no. Chicken MC. It's going to be Pie Cat that's in trouble. There's the shackle. The Treant's continuing to chip away at him. Oh. The war stomp will interrupt. That is some trust in your team right there. Yeah. That's some teamwork. <laughs> Pie Cat walks away with 60 hit points to spare. A close call, but they make it happen. Yeah, level one Rasa. No one's really scared of him. Well, he was level two at that point. But well yeah. played, well played. Well played. So that opened up a little bit of space for Misery here. Ten. No, he's seven and four on that Luna Drow down bottom. Well, she's in free farm heaven. D1 uh, doing some doing some work. I'm really curious to see what build he goes for. We saw that funky Drow build the other day that was precision aura primary, and it seems that D1. It's is not bad, but you need silence yeah. too. Like he's going a little more standard here. At least level three, two uh, points in frost arrows. Yeah, and he also went Ring of Basilius, no agility for his teammates. Nature's prop with only plus five damage from her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. not too much. But I guess every little bit counts. Nature's Prophet was doing well up here, sitting eight and three, though that spill will hold him back a little bit. We'll see the Bat Rider rotate from the bottom lane. Sone is sitting level two, and he will move into the jungle. And Man, that's a no Mud Golem stack. Bat Rider's like, yes, finally. Things are going well for Team Dog so far. We also see uh, two Basiliuses on the Radiant team. So Team Zerg has one on the Enigma as well as one on the Draw Ranger, and that's just wasted gold. Mm -hmm. How do you like uh, the Basilius on Enigma? <laughs> I've heard most people say that Soul Ring is really the way to go. With oh, it depends Basilius. on what you want to do. If you want to push, then you get Basilius. If you want to farm, you get Soul Ring. But okay. Soul Ring will, is definitely more mana regen. Mm -hmm. And I think usually someone else has a Basilia, so here the Soul Ring really would have been a better choice. Yeah, Soul choice. Ring would have been better. Yeah. 
but uh, I mean, it's also really nice to be able to like soul ring a mech and conserve your mana. Too. Nature's Prophet Radiant's ports out from up top. As there was a wraparound from Fog as well as Pycat, he's got Dyer's the Wild Wing Ripper that will get taken out to the Wrath of Time, and also has a Hellbear Smasher. Nice heads-up play from the Nature's Prophet. He does make it out with plenty of time to spare. Meanwhile, down bottom, Enigma has moved out of the jungle, and uh, he's been joined by Chicken MC. They force out the Glyph from the Dire side. As this tower takes heavy damage, I think it will be a Tier 1 for Tier 1 exchange. Use that position, Aura. Use that activate. Maybe they're going to use it on the T2. They, they need someone down there right now. Okay, looks like the Firefly's there. Already going to get some of that fire down. The tower is surrounded with a ring. And D1 is just standing in the fire. He's just Radiant's taking it like a chair. play well, number one rule, don't stand in the fire. And, and I think this guy. <laughs> Dude, look this, at him. He's. This he guy needs die. to go back to. Oh my goodness. Oh my god, that was yeah. really close. If he didn't have wand charges, he was dead. It's a four on one situation. If that guy died there, that would just be so embarrassing. That was way too close for comfort. Go back I, to WoW rating 101, man. Yeah. My rule of thumb, if it looks bad, it probably <laughs> is bad. That's well, luckily he had a self, so he's not in that much danger. He also has not popped precision aura yet, but I guess there aren't any range creeps actually in this lane. Yeah. Well, that's tier a, two that's a lot of experience. Tower Both attack. towers are gonna fall. This will be just two free towers apiece. I think that's actually better for Dire, because Dire has a worse pushing lineup. So if you can trade even on towers with a worse pushing lineup, you're in a good position. Yeah, I actually agree with you there. So they will continue to pursue. Bat Rider will get glimpsed back into the kinetic field. And Son, I'm sorry, buddy, but you will take a spill. Not the worst thing in the world. He is missing out on a fair amount of experience, but he did get level 5. He will get level 6 if he goes back to lane immediately afterwards. So now Rasta is almost level 6 too. That This push was before Rasta level 6, but is also without the Dragonite on the t side of Team Zerg. And Dragon Knight is level 7. He actually is sitting in Elder Dyer's Dragon form. As we speak, does have a attack. Bracer up as well as uh, Power Treads headed down bottom. We'll grab that 6-minute rune, uh, double damage. So maybe uh, DNT will continue the pushing prowess here. Double damage does help quite a bit. No, he's just going to go ahead and pop the DD rune and sip up the bottle. And Enigma will go back to farming, still uh, only level 5, but uh, already has early arcane boots to go with that Basilius and a smoke ready, so perhaps we'll see Enigma look he for needs level six. black hole opportunity here. But yeah, actually Enigma did sacrifice some of that early experience. The good benchmark is Enigma should be able to keep up with the mid heroes pretty well, Dragonite halfway through level 7, so Enigma sacrificing some of his own experience to secure those tier two, uh, that tier 2 tower kill in the bottom lane. Bad Rise are actually pretty farmed. He has 1,500 gold, solo off lane, and two of his towers have been pushed down, and now he'll finally get some space to farm his Blink Dagger. And once he gets his Blink Dagger, D and T, I guess they have to be like somewhat wary during pushes. They do have some counter initiation with Malefis, with the instant sun from Dragon Knight in range form. So, eh, we'll see. And Doggy Style is pretty farmed as the solo mid. Uh, 36 last hits compared to 36. Or 37 compared to 36 from deep. A very two. even mid lane. With these two heroes, it's very much so. Here goes the second uh, tower. Yep. Or third tower, rather. Mm hmm. They will press forward. Elder Dragon form has been popped. Uh, Mr. Doggy Style does not have Earth Splitter right now. Might actually come in handy in this kind of a scenario. And there it is. He's actually going to hit level 8. Dyer's we'll go ahead and grab the Earth Splitter instead fallen. of that last point in natural order. But I don't know that he'll have an opportunity to use it. It will just be a free tower kill the way of DNT. Now look at this gold graph. It is all over the place as all these towers have fallen. Well, look at Elder Titan's damage. Plus 179. That's what happens when you have a lot of summons. Yeah. that's, uh, that's He's really going to hit point. like a truck. Oof. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. Elder Titan, a hero you don't think of that works well against summons, but it does allow him to rack up those... Uh, those the spirit buffs. I don't know what the right word for it is. The, the astral spirit damage. <laughs> up top. Yeah, that will be a dead nature's prophet. Misery does secure a solo kill, actually. With the Eclipse. Yeah, caught the, the tail end of it, but uh, did use that Lucent Beam to finish I think off. that Dignitas' push shot is going to fall flat kind of around the 15-16 to 16 minute mark, because I don't think they're going to have enough map control to do Roshan, especially with a Bat Rider on the team, and Luna and Shadow Shaman, who are very, very good at fighting around the Roshan pit. So, yeah, they're going to get towers here and there. They're going to get a few, and Drow is going to have some items, and Nature's Prophet is going to get his Necro Book, but at the same time, like, Luna is pretty fat. She's going to start ancient stacking now that she has her HOD. Bat Rider is going to have his Blink Dagger right now. And Elder Titan attack. is actually pretty stacked too. And he has a haste rune. So like things are clicking in place for Team Dog. Yep. 
They certainly are as they group up to start pressuring this bottom tier one tower, though DNT, they're ready to defend. They will rotate four heroes. Everyone's down here except Dro. And they will fend off this tower push. Team Dog will make the right choice. This is a really good decision by Team Dog, though. Yeah. Forcing them down to the bottom lane, and they're all grouped up right now, but what are they going to do? Push a T3? So they're wasting a ton of their time. Usually teams will push a T1, but the T1 and the T2 are both down. So it looks like they'll try to transition that into a smoke gank, but, I mean, how how scared are they? Batrider is even farming the lane, even though everyone's missing. But yeah. he already has his blink dagger, so it doesn't matter if he dies. Right, and Fog is actually starting to fall behind a little bit. He had a great opening, but he's only level 4 on this Enchantress. No impetus out. Oh, the MYM Dog is about to take a spill. He is so dead. Oh, yes, he certainly is. And there's the Kinetic Field, the Glimpse back in. Not even an Eclipse available. We'll throw out a Lucent Beam onto the Disruptor, but the damage just isn't there. In comes the Drill Ranger, and she's actually the one They should have expected hit. that, though. Like, th they should expect that, oh, all of them are clumped up, they're probably going to try and do something while they're all clumped up instead of wasting their time, so... If Enchantress had been there, it wouldn't have been that big of a deal, but they switched out because Luna wanted the form. Illusion. But also, this Observer Ward helped them out a lot. Yeah. And uh, Enigma is now actually level 7, so Black Hole is online, a great time for DNT to try and press forward and not only knock down more towers, but force a team fight. They've got their ultimates up, and they are ready to do some damage They're back dooring though. Uh-oh. Disruptor takes a lot of damage to start off this fight. He will fall, gets a kinetic field off, but it won't do too much. He does buy back just about straight away. Pycat coming around the side. There's the Black Hole. Connects with Doggy Style as well as Fogged. In comes the Bat Rider, looking for an opening here. There's the blink forward. He catches the Enigma, but Enchantress has already fallen. Earth Splitter comes out. Doesn't do too much damage. Another kinetic field. Yeah, Doggy Style will get glimpsed back. Taking a lot of damage here, but he will survive. In comes an Eclipse from the Luna. Secures a kill on the Dragon Knight, as well as the Dro Ranger. Team Dog started with kind of a messy engage here, but they do clean it up, and they take an edge. Disruptor will probably have a die back. Oh, that creep. Oh, the... The uh, Ursa using for stacking will actually come in handy for a kill. Well done, and they'll just transition right into the Roche Pit. Pycat didn't even use his Voodoo Wards in that fight. Yeah, so I now I see how one-dimensional Dignitas is. They try to run exa almost the exact same strategy that they did the last time, and they don't really seem to be able to do that much else besides push and try and snowball off that lead. And as I said, more flexibility is always good, as I talked about in the first match, and they just can't really do that much. What do they do now? Their push just completely... Their push has completely failed in the T2. They weren't able to get any important kills. And now where does their strength come in? Like, what does Drow Ranger have? An Ogre Club. What does <laughs> Dragon I have? Also an Ogre Club. And Nature's Prophet, no Midas, so they can't play Greedy. And they also don't have a Necro Book. Enigma, he's going for Mech, but he doesn't have it yet. So they're going to try for a push again, but they might get one more T1 tower. But after that, like, the items are just rolling in for Team Dogged. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Right now, uh, Dragon Knight is their primary farmer, but they still haven't completed any of those core items. And it looks like Fogged is actually working towards a mech of his own, and he's pretty darn close. Oh, they want to defend this. Screw giving them the T1 tower. They have Rasta wards up in 40 seconds. They have Lasso up. They really, have they Black Hole is down. Yeah, that's, that's really the big thing. With Black Hole down, they can feel pretty safe taking a team fight. Jimmy Ho starts it off with an Echo Stomp. And in comes the Bat Rider. Will hop forward, does not connect with the lasso. Instead, they turn on the Elder Titan. Oh, Radiant's Demon takes a spill to start off this fight. Attack. That was really Radiant's silly about a Bat Rider. He just got glimpsed back home because he was careless. When you're playing versus Disruptor, you, you TP into the fog and then you wait so that you don't get glimpsed back to base. So they gave up a tower unnecessarily because of that. Well, at least he didn't waste the lasso ultimate. Perhaps he realized his misplay as he uh, hopped forward. but Or maybe he just missed the lasso, one or the other, hard to say. Yep, they're trying to defend the T2 now. Hole will be up in 55 seconds. Elder Titan will be up in 11 seconds. MYM Dog is not in any fighting shape, though. He has 400 HP, although he does have the Aegis. I don't know if he wants to burn it on this, but if they want to fight, they need Luna. Yep, Eclipse is up in 20 seconds. There are the Voodoo Wards, or the, the Serpent Wards, pardon me. Using all of Rasta's abilities here. The Wards are just going to get cleaned up, though. Plenty of summons to deal with them. And they are starting to take some damage. That Sticky Napalm is adding up. The Astral Spirit coming in. Echo Stomp will connect. Sets up a kill on the Dro. And now DNT will be on the back foot. They'll be forced to about face. Kinetic Field comes out, but Dragonite in big trouble as he takes a hex. The Aegis has been popped. Luna will come back. Full health, full mana. Dragonite rotating Oh, what a the juke by Dragonite. And he will port out. And up here, it looks like that was Disruptor. He'll port out as well. Wow, a good escape from DNT. They minimize their losses. Dro Ranger, not the target they wanted to fall, but I mean, they got a fair bit of gold there just from clearing out the Rasta Wards.
and they did crippling damage to that tower, so still not a and bad push the for Aegis. the Radiant. And they burned the Aegis too, yeah, good point. Yeah, not bad at all. At the same time, is it enough though? Is it enough? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, minimizing your losses is good, but at this point they need to do more than that. They need to uh, put some heavy casualties onto the opposition. Right. Experience graph 7,500 in favor of the Dire. Only 3,000 gold lead, but the experience is really going to start to come into play. I mean, look at the hero levels. They've got three level 11s. The highest on DNT is Dragonite at level 9. Just the difference in ultimate power is going to start to shine. And not only that, uh, Team Zerg is up in towers. They're they've killed four towers to the opponents oh, three, misery. but at the same time they're down by thirty five hundred gold. Oh misery! Yeah, misery is in big trouble. Not surviving that one. They did smoke into the jungle. He <laughs> seems like a very greedy oh, farmer. Uh, I've seen Pycat play the carry on most of the teams that Misery on has played on, and they're very different carries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean they did smoke up. They don't have a lot of vision here, so he wouldn't have known that they were coming. But uh, sort of wrong place at the wrong time kind of scenario. DNT did have but a shot. But when so many heroes are missing off the map and you're the most important hero with farm, yeah. you need to be more careful. The position, it's, it's not worth the risk of being so far out of position to right. farm the easy camp. At right. least <laughs> farm at the least, hard camp. Or, or farm like safe. Ancients yeah. because you're in a well-fortified position and they have to push up the hill. Yeah. But and that's a decent he, stack, he's, he's decent very obvious stack. with his farming. Yeah. Well, still the number one farmer here. Uh, good kill for DNT. They will grab this tier two tower up top. In exchange for their tier one tower mid, Rost Awards were actually burned, so that will be uh, two outer towers remaining for DNT, one remaining for Team Dog. That is their tier two in the mid lane that is still standing. But dig no toss. They will continue pressing forward. They're going to try and zerg this. Three man three. stomp. Uh oh. Uh oh. Bat Rider hops in. He grabs the Enigma, and Enigma will fall. Black Hole is off cooldown, but he takes a spill. Dro Ranger has also been picked off in the fray. Down goes the Dragon Knight, the Disruptor, Nature's Prophet, the only one able to pour it out. A complete and utter disaster for our Radiant team. That is a disaster. You talked about earlier in the game how people aren't going to clump up for Black Hole, but they clumped up for a three-man Echo Stomp into a three-man Earth Splitter, too. Yep. And Echo Stomp is way harder to hit, too. Yep. So I'm surprised that uh, they're, they're just, like, forcing the issue too much. It's, it's one, too one-dimensional. they they just trying to brute force up to their base, and it's just not working out for them. That that T-shirt, the 1A, 2A, 3A is coming to mind here. Just, hey, move into the base. All guns up, gents, Leroy style. Yeah, that, it really does seem that way, though. They got the glimpse off, but it was a little bit too late. Yeah. And Enigma wasn't able to pull his bike hole off, and I don't even know if he got his neck off either. I I didn't see it, but, I mean, he was pretty much disabled from the get-go. He's pretty squishy, and once he was caught in the lasso, he... I mean, he just didn't really have an opportunity to do much. Yep. I mean, mech first on Enigma isn't bad, but this almost feels like one of those it's games where... Yeah, it, it's too it's too little too late. Having a blink in that fight would have been a lot different. He could have zoned out a little bit more and then hopped in and not made an easy initiative. He's like on that. even farm with the Batrider. Oh, actually, Batrider is probably more farmed. Yeah. Batrider has... By just a bit, but... A yeah, but this is, this is a safe lane jungling Enigma versus a solo off lane hero <laughs> versus a tri lane. They that's should not even be close in, yeah. in uh, terms of farm. That's definitely true, yeah. Yep, starting to look a little bit more grim for our Radiant side. Remember, guys, this is a best of three in the winner's bracket of uh, this American qualifier. So regardless of who falls in this series, they will have another shot through the loser's bracket. And uh, even if uh, Dignitas can't oh, turn around right. the momentum in this game, well, they'll have another chance as it That's is a That's a huge stack for Luna, too. Now she has completed BKB as well as 1,800 gold on top, 1,700 gold. Wow, yeah. And now things will be a little bit more difficult. They do have the black hole to try and deal with these BKBs, but this Luna is quickly getting out of control. She's also uh, tied for the highest level in the match at 13 with that of Elder Titan. Bat Rider now has a Force Staff, which is just adding insult to injury at this point. And uh, even Pie Cat, it looks like he is, well, hard to say if that's going to be an Ags or if that's going to be a BKB, but he's got an Ogre Club I said now. BKB. They, the BKB. They, just need, they just need him to survive during team fights. They don't yeah. really have that much for his BKB. They're probably going to be focusing on Drow if she's just standing there wailing away. And that's about it. Well, Drow does have her uh, BKB up now. Going to finish off that creep, and we'll be able to pick up the recipe. So steps in the right direction. But now Drow, she's just so underleveled. She's only level 9. Her farm is... Mediocre at best. She's middle of the pack. Not not bad. Not great. But her lack of experience. Yeah, Luna's almost fourteen. Too, yeah, so. nine versus fourteen on the position ones. That's a huge disparity. Even if they have equal farm, it is huge. I mean, that's uh, now the the yeah. push pushers are getting pushed. Yeah, never a good sign. 
Well, Team Dog will group up in the bottom lane, Radiant's and this bottom tier two will fall. A glyph is available for Team DNT, but they will fallen. save it. Tower count is now dead, even five apiece. The tier twos in mid still standing. Gold lead has extended to about 6,000 gold, and the map control completely Dyer's goes to Team Dog right now. Under. They could take Roshan pretty easily when it respawns, and it looks like it will respawn in possibly 15 seconds to 3 minutes and 15 seconds, so they'll most likely be huddling around that. Elder Titan is getting pretty big too, and they're going to have 3 BKBs up, or sorry, at least 2 BKBs up pretty soon. One on Elder Titan, one on the Luna, and a third one coming on Shadow Shaman. He's actually well on his way to it too. He could afford his hammer right now. He's looks like they're smoking. Close. They don't have a blink on Enigma though. And looks like they may be able to catch out the Batrider. He may get glimpsed back, but Batrider kill is not the hero you're looking for. Yep. There's the glimpse into Kinetic Field. Ooh, he, he, I think he could have blinked back uh, like right as soon as he got glimpsed. He had like a very tiny window to do so. Yeah. Could have been possible. But like you said, Batrider, never bad to get a kill, but uh, yeah, not, not the most game-changing of heroes to pick off while Luna is still just free farming in the jungle. And uh, with another about 3.5k gold in the bank following that BKB that was just picked up. Glyph is available for the Dire side. Bat Rider down for another 20 seconds. They may opt just to sacrifice this tower without their Bat Rider. Echo Stomp does connect on Drow as well as Disruptor. Jimmy's been doing well with his Echo Stomps. He's actually caught a lot of multiple Dyer's hero echoes, which is rather impressive. Has set up Dyer's for some of these kills. We see Misery on the high ground, looking for an opening to come in from behind. And with a couple heroes boarding out, maybe this is the opening that he was waiting for. Disruptor will be an easy kill, perhaps. No, just going to go straight for the Dragonite. He gets dropped. Drow pops her BKB. She'll survive the Wrath of the Eclipse. Out comes a black hole from Enigma, but there's no follow-up damage. Enigma will fall right after the hole completes. Disruptor gets juiced. Dro shortly after. It's a four for nil, and they did that without their Bat Rider. Well, all right, he hopped in at the end. He finished off the Drow, but he was only there for the tail end of the exchange. And did you see how much damage Drow did during the black hole? Almost nothing. And she's supposed to be a physical damage dealer. And the two PKB heroes got black holes. So there was only magic damage going in, or physical damage going in. And she just wailed on them. And yeah. Elder Titan maybe dropped like 15, 20% health. Yeah. Uh, it was. It's the problem. They just don't have the damage here. She's too under leveled and under farmed compared, compared. Like, a Luna with Treads BKB is just so much more useful than a Drown BKB. Because a d burst from Eclipse, she could probably not even attack in a fight and do more damage than a Drown with Eclipse. Yeah, no, you're, you're exactly right. And that's part of the problem where you're forced to go BKB first. It's almost like Storm Spirit. When you're forced to go BKB first, it really limits your damage output. Same with Weaver. Yeah, but the difference is Dro is their position one hard carry that absolutely has to be doing damage for them to take these team fights. Um, so the fact that she had to go BKB now, she's she's just crippled. She's pigeonholed Roshan in what she can do. And it will dive. be a free second Roche going the way of Team Dog here at the 21 minute mark. Aegis the way of Luna. Things looking very grim very quickly here. 7,500 gold lead, but that experience graph is what's scary. Upwards of 20,000 here at the 22 minute mark. Yep. Luna almost has her completed Manta too. Like, look how fast and furious she's getting her items. And Draw Ranger is just like, eh, I'm working on my next thing. I don't know what it's going to be because I don't know when I'm going to save up gold. <laughs> Oh, hey guys, just farming. Well, what can Dignitas do right here? They need to find some kills. I think they're at the point where they can't turtle up and farm. They have to try and gank. They're, they're getting oh, close they're to Oh, they're trying to fight under time. a tornado. Oh, Batrider hops forward, does not connect with the lasso quite yet. Now stuck inside the kinetic field. He'll move out of it, but he will get silenced. A Batrider will actually fall in this fight. Misery comes in, BKB pops, finishes off the drow. He just goes blow for blow and is able to take her out. Meanwhile, around the backside, Nature's Prophet, well, in big trouble. The wards have come down from Rasta, and they secure the kill. Meanwhile, in the mid, Misery now level 16, taking a lot of damage. Does have the Aegis, so it's all right. Fog now with the Nature's Attendance. BKB off on the Dragon Knight. He'll be in big trouble. A few images from the man. face. Wow, he is very bold. In comes the Echo Stomp. Does connect with a couple. Disruptor gets punched in the face. Oh, Dragon Knight following a similar GG. fate. GG, well played. Dro gets juiced as well. Another drill, Dro fail. Add it to the list. We need like a chalkboard here behind us. Forget about this old international Dyer banner. We need like a chalkboard of drow victories and defeats and just tally it up. Zero, you don't even need to call them for victories. <laughs> this is zero for three right now, man. Oh, man. I, you know... As much as there was there was a while where I was thinking, what happened to Dro? Maybe some team should experiment. Stop no. the experiment. Pull the plug. Cancel the funding. <laughs> it's please. <laughs> it's no good. I mean, complain to Ice Frog. Yeah. Well, I mean, is, is there a strategy that's viable for Drow? I mean, how can you work her in? Because we've seen you all work these her in strategies. in pushes where you don't actually have to fight. 
She's really good at split pushing if you don't actually fight because her marksmanship is obviously going to be active when there's nobody okay. around. All right. So That's if you can actually get to that point, then you can. But they, they had like a five-on-five five push and fight. Right. Like if you have a split push lineup based around it, I think it's fine. But Okay. I, I don't think it's fine. I think it's it, okay. It's viable. That this strategy just, just right. doesn't work. She can also do Roshan very easily, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people opt for attack speed builds on her with Trez, Midas, maybe Maelstrom mm -hmm. thrown in there, maybe Mask of Madness. She needs to do damage. She doesn't do any damage right now. So yeah. you, you need to be able to keep people away from her. And they just don't have a big combo breaker. Like Enigma without a blink you're probably not going to hit by a hole. They got hit by two holes, and most of them were on BKB heroes anyways. Yeah. So it's just, she's just not that good. <laughs> Moral of the story, Drow Ranger, questionable pick at best. That's a, a nice yes, way to say it. that I, is a nice way to say I it. I don't want to insult Dignitas. They seem to be very excited about Drow, but I, I'm, a, I'm a naysayer. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I think they need to switch. They need to switch it up, Merlini. They, they need, need to do something different. They need to do something strat. different. Yeah, it's just not... It's just not working out. It's they too they have to outplay them because they can't like this. This one, I would say that they have a slightly better draft, slightly better, not that much better because Drow is a poor substitute for Luna, mm -hmm. and we have Disruptor who didn't really fit into the strategy. Yeah, he had some kills, but he isn't your quintessential pusher slash fighter like right. Pugna or something would be like. Why 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 don't they go why back for Pugna? Pugna? That's I the don't second know. time we brought that up. Actually, they could have just done safe lane Pugna and just crush people. Yeah. So, all right, guys, the next game will start pretty quickly here. We're going to take a short break, and Game 2 of this Best of 3 series is coming up next.